most important match of the season in 1991 for Eastern Suburbs and St George. Good evening everyone and welcome to our Nissan Friday Nighter between the Roosters and the Saints as both these teams now are starting to search for some former days of glory. For Eastern Suburbs it was back in 1987 when they were last in the big end of season matches. And good evening Wayne Pearce, they are still within a chance uh, here tonight. Yeah they are and their supporters will certainly have their hearts in their mouths tonight because uh, the Roosters really must win this one. If they're to win this match then they've got to look towards their forwards because they've got a big edge in the forward pack in my opinion. At fullback, uh, George, Steve Georgialis comes in. He's uh, a rookie at this position, so it'll be interesting to see how he handles it. Prothero, Deacon, Hill, Orford, Paul, Sherlock, and that strong looking forward pack. Vorton, McGahn, who's captain, Beecraft, Hardy, Marshall, Salvatore, and the coach is Mark Murray. OK, which way are you going? At home, Sydney Football Stadium, I'm leaning towards East. Yeah, well, I was talking about former days of glory. I can hear St. George fans asking the same question. Bill Anderson was a grand final and minor premiership back in 85. Uh, they mightn't get the minor premiership, but a chance for the semi still. Yeah, they are. They're sailing along pretty well. They've won three out of their last four, and that narrow loss was to Penrith, so they're not going too badly, are they, of late? They've built that on the back of their back line, Graham, and if you have a look at that back line, it really has got plenty of pace. Potter at fullback. What about those two wingers? The envy of the league, Walford and the fire. The centres, Coyne and Beatty. The halves, Coyne and Hodges. Forwards, they're pretty solid too. Hardy, Goulet, Fullerton Smith, Pickett, Collins and Osborne. And the coach, Brian Smith. Great, it was the Roosters 20 to 10 tonight. In the President's Cup, St George led 14 to 4 late in the second half before caving in 24 to 14. back in that fullback position. He's been around in the St George back line in 91. And fullback is his favourite. Now a fire. Greeted by the Eastern Suburbs forwards. Spectacular. Orford. A kick to an open wing. But there was plenty of defence out there also. Hill. It's interesting. 32 tries from Eastern Suburbs this season, 34 to St George. And amazingly, out of that 34, there's been 13 scored by a fire and also Walford. And a fire's only been here four weeks. Salvatore on a very short blind side. He's learned how to tackle since he was last year. Sherlock with a long ball out to Hall. Likewise to Vorton, it was too long. Eastern Suburbs have won the past five encounters against the Saints. Goulet onto a good short ball. Support from Beanie. A fire's outside now. The kick and chase. Orford in a fire. A fire up gets it down, does he? No. Now the touch judge has ruled no. A fire has booted the ball out into the seats. He can't believe it. The touch judge was the one that overruled. He had the call. Great short ball. St George had plenty of support. The kick was on for Beatty because a fire had a defender between them. The race was on and the bounce was there for a fire. Touch judge was there. He looked to get it down. He didn't touch the post. It was an Eastern Suburbs player. Yeah, that was a try for mine. A fire actually had to pull up. He was do going too fast for Beattie. He couldn't find a, a position for himself. He, he was finding it hard to be able to get the ball. I think he called for the hit kick ahead, but he got that one down. Now Sherlock with Eastern Suburbs. Hall putting the kick in for Eastern Suburbs. One bounce over the sideline. Now, let's see if we can have a closer look at a fire. And just who took this post out? In goal judge is there. A fire got it down and he didn't go anywhere near the post. Touch judge was incorrect. Now, it's interesting that we've got in goal judges. And I know a touch judge has to call on the corner post, Bill, but if heads had have got together there, I think we would have had a St George try. I'm sure if the touch judge and the referee had the benefit of what we've got, and that's the replay, it would have been ruled as such. Yeah, but I don't think the question was the, was the corner post. I think it was the actual white line in goal, and uh, it was very close to that. Nil all. The Roosters and the Saints. Dummy from Coyne. Beautiful dummy. Ankle tap by Sherlock. It's still on. Beatty again. Beatty to a fire. He loses it. 
There are some opportunities going missing now, but it's an open match here. It's quite obvious, Graham, that St George are going to attack Eastern Suburbs out wide. That's where they view they have strength, and they're certainly coming up trumps early. They get too far. Yeah, that, they do. That, that ability to hit the advantage line and, and to be comfortable in where you take it, just a little bit wide off the dummy half so you stretch their defence, is an art. Not this time as Collins gets out of there for Hardy. Good bounce to Goulet. Quick hands to Osborne. Osborne! inside good night oh good skills from Osborne Martin Afire will go and join them in row A that's what they've come to see give him half a chance he's gone this is what he gets paid for Martin Afire now here's the lead up on the Nissan replay on to Jeff Hardy a much improved footballer since he played with Illawarra he got the pass back. It wasn't a good one to Goulet, but he was able to keep the ball alive. Now, Osborne here, terrific front rower skills. He drew all, got the bad ball back into off here, and when he gets it that close to the gate, to the try line, it shut the gate. Good play from Collins. Collins got out of dummy half to keep it alive, and Hardy heard his call right up the middle. Hardy also heard some more calls. It bounced beautifully for Goulet, charging onto this one, Osborne. Now for a big man, he will keep his arms high and alive. He hears the call from off here, a fire I should say, and he is gone. He loves scoring tries. The reason he does because he's always in the right position at the right time and doesn't he love to score them? No one enjoys try scoring tries anymore than Martin Afire. Professional footballer from Witness in England to St George cage by Osborne. Yeah, he, George Arliss has put under a lot of pressure there. He's just come back from injury and he didn't appreciate that. Well, he's still down with the trainer too. Yeah, Eastern Suburbs game this year has been built around uh, basic mis mistake-free football and they've deviated from that pattern tonight and, it's, and they're really paying the price for it. The Saints coming back through Brittle. Oh! Only the four points in it. But enough advantage for St George if they can add another try to make it real dangerous. Walford's on the inside of Coyne. He goes out to a fire. Was he behind him? Yes, says Annesley. He's a freak. Martin the fire was one side. Ricky Walford the other. Take your pick. Peter Coyne said, I'll stay with this freak from Witness. All the way from England. But give a rap to this man, Peter Coyne. All the skills, a dummy, a jinking run through. He's looking out wide, the kick. George Jarlis was recovering from injury out on the wing. A fire just left him in his wake. Well, Peter Coyne did well here. He made the initial break. He had support by Ricky Walford on one side and Martin Afire on the other. Now, here's the break. Good footwork there. He starts to look for support, realises they can't get to him, so he puts it onto the toe. Now, Martin Offie has got a few negatives in his game, but whatever negatives he's got, they're made up for by tremendous positional sense and speed. Doesn't he like scoring them? Martin Afire gets a double. Last tackle as the Saints get back to halfway. Peter Coyne. Made sure that Potter had a little bit more time than he to get the kick in. Country Rugby League fans, the Northern Rivers TV Super League Series, of course, travels to Queen Elizabeth Park Casino tomorrow night. A vital one between Northern Rivers Group 1 and Mid-North Coast. 7.30 p.m. to kick off up there. The Roosters. Still with a lot of time on their hands, but they need to score a lot of points. Brendan Hall, little chip, easily covered by Goulet. They showed their hand too quickly on that one. Yeah, Goulet's maturing. He's always had plenty of potential, but never fulfilled it since he, he came across last year from Rugby Union. But now he's showing maturity, he's showing a bit of confidence in himself, and he's starting to look like a league player rather than a rugby union player playing league. Mark Coyne has been a fine player for the Saints. Now he's looking for a fire. 
make it a hat trick. That is rubbing soul into the wound. You think he hasn't enjoyed this? Against his old club, Eastern Suburbs, that's what hurt most. He gets three. Mark Coyne made the bust. A great step. He left Salvatore in no man's land. The Nissan replay, as soon as he broke the line, he knew who was coming. Not just coin though, so did East. So did 14 and a half thousand fans here at the stadium. He made it a hat trick. Sit back and watch a winger who knows how to put himself into position to score a try. Now here's Mark Coyne. He makes the initial break and all he's thinking about here is where is Martin? A fire. Now look at a fire. Look at him position himself. He leaves it to the last instant. Chops back inside. Takes the reverse pass and goes in for his third. Now, he loves it. <laughs> Somehow I think he knew it was a hat trick. <laughs> Could have been five. <laughs> what a buy by the Saints. And what a performance tonight. Walford adds the extras. What a great wing pair they are. It is 28 points to eight. The skipper, Michael Beattie, is back to the bench, but he's all smiles. The Roosters have been burnt tonight. Their feathers have been well and truly singed by Martin of Fire. The Roosters try a rarity in rugby league. The short kickoff needed when you're in trouble. There has been some brilliant tries here this evening. Interesting comment from a fire when he first joined St George. According to the press, he said, just tell my teammates to make sure I see plenty of the ball. It hasn't taken them long to realise about his match-winning performances. But the first couple of weeks he was here, some of the questions did start to surface again, didn't they? You know, whether he had it and some of his games weren't quite of the quality of this one. But now that he's found his feet, there's no stopping him. They should never have surfaced, though. Bill, he's done it enough in international football. Well, I suppose the next question is, is international football as hard as this?